There are times I wish I had a thousand tongues to sing, but uh, I just need to make sure I use the one that God gave me to give him honor and glory and praise for all he's done. Thank you, choir. Thank you, orchestra. Thank you, Mark. You did great. Uh, if you have your Bible, open to Matthew chapter number 25. Matthew chapter number... No, do not do that. <laughs> Matthew 15. Uh, it's bad when the pastor's confused. Yeah, y'all good with that? Amen, I agree with that. Now, in, in uh, John chapter 13, you don't have to turn there, verse 34, Jesus... Uh, with his disciples at the end said a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you as I have loved you that you also love one another in the same way that I've loved you love each other by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another I guess you're kind of getting the drift that God wants us to love each other. Not just the ones you choose. All people. We're in a study in the month of July on vision. Now, people have different thoughts when they think of vision. But I just want to remind you that uh, uh, vision that we are wanting to talk about is being able to see things the way God sees things. And today I want to talk about seeing others the way God sees them, listen to me now, and not simply the way you see them. You've got a view, but God has a view. And your view might be distorted, but God's is not. Yours might come through uh, uh, because of circumstances and situations and hardships. Yours, because of things that have happened, you may view them differently than God views them, but God's got a better view. Now, Matthew 24, stay in Matthew 15. But in Matthew 24, verse 10, when he's speaking of the end times, and if we're not there, we're awfully close. I believe we're there. It is the time after the resurrection, and really all those times are called end times. But when he's talking about the end of this time on earth, he says, and then many will be offended. Anybody in here ever been offended? Don't be so quiet. Do you know anybody that's been offended? Is it, is it not becoming an offended society? Everybody's offended about just about anything and all things, anything. I've always said that if you put your feelings out on their sleeves, they will get hurt. Matter of fact, Jesus said in Luke 17... Then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. There will be offenses. Jesus, the one who can do all things, said, because there is sin, because we're broken, because we're all, uh, we all come up short of the glory of God, because of that, it is impossible that no offenses should come. So we're going to get offended. Y'all good with that? We will be offended. But he says here, but woe to whom, woe to him whom the, they do come. So he says offenses will come, but if you're the one who is causing the offense, that's bad. That's really bad. Now, if we're to love one another the way God would have us love one another, and we understand that everyone will be offended, that offenses will come, whether it's meant to hurt us or not meant to hurt us, we're still going to get the brunt of it. We're still going to get all these things. But God says, love one another. As a matter of fact, love in such a way that when people who do not know Christ see your life, they will see Christ in you. They will know that you're a follower of God by how you reach out to, to see value in people and to love on them. 
Now, that means in the worst of situations, we have to have the best of Christ. Do I need to say that again? In the hard times, the difficult times, that's when we need to have the most of Christ. That's when we need more of his help than any other time. We need to, because it's not going to be easy unless we're leaning upon and looking to the magnificence of God. So we're going to get offended. We're, we're going to get offensive, offended. Offenses will be there. But wouldn't it be great if we could see through the lens of Christ and see the person, see the circumstance, and maybe not hear it with our ears, but with his ears. Maybe not feel it with our feelings, but with his feelings. Maybe we need to blend it through circumstances. Maybe there's things we don't know about. I have learned that people who are hurt will hurt others. And maybe that's part of it. We need to understand that, that just because there will be offenses out there, maybe we can rise up higher than that and not be offended. Matter of fact, if we could learn this, if we could find this, we'd be the better for it. You see those people who are walking around who are always offended? They're not happy. They're not happy at all. So let's, if, if we're going to talk about the vision of God, we need to look at the, the vision of God in these type circumstances. And for me to, to talk about that, I, I actually... I, I want to give a preface before I, before I say this. Uh, I'm going to be preaching someone else's outline. I don't want you to think it was original to me. And, and I can't improve on it. Now, if I give the outline, the, the meat will be mine. Amen? But I'm going to steal the outline. Is that good? <laughs> I'm being honest with you. I didn't have to tell you that. You could have said, Pastor, that was an absolutely wonderful outline. You could have thought it was me, and I'm telling you, it wasn't me. It was a 30-something-year-old pastor in Texas, and if you could hear him preach, he's 100 times better than me. I couldn't preach his message if I have to, but I loved his outline. I preached this material many, many times, and, and it's just a blessing to me when I think about offenses that are out there. So if you have your Bible in Matthew 15, if you'll stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Let's begin reading in verse number 21. Verse number 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. And he answered her not a word. His disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. And he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he, but he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. You're right, he said it, to the little dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, Great is your faith. You're only going to see this two times where Jesus looks at someone and says, Great is your faith. Both times it was Gentiles, not Jews. They had a different vantage point, a different view. They didn't take Jesus for granted. It says, Great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed six months later. No? Six weeks? Six hours? What is it God's Word says? Her daughter was healed from that very hour. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I, I see it as that. It's an opportunity that we have, and I pray we take advantage of it. Thank you, O oh God, that you are here. Thank you that this is not my Word, that is your Word. And Father... If you speak, we will be blessed. If I speak, we will, we will leave 
hollow and empty. So send your spirit. Draw us close. Father, you are the one who deserves glory and honor and praise. So Lord, give us your perspective today. Father, we live in a world where people are offended all the time, where we are offended all the time. And you've called us for better. You've called us for joy and peace and love. You've called us to live a life that is your life, your heart, your thoughts, your will, and your love and your, your vision. So Lord, let us peek in today. More of you, O oh God, and less of us. Change us. O oh God, let us leave different because of you. In your name I pray, amen. You can be seated. Jesus had a, left uh, Galilee and had traveled to the northwest. And up on the coast of the Mediterranean, he comes up to the region and the city there that he had not been very often before uh, to the city of Ty uh, Tyre, the region of Tyre and Sidon. And as he was there, he was in a house there, and word got out. And when word got out that Jesus was there, there was a woman, a Syrophoenician woman, a Gentile woman. And she had a daughter who was demon-possessed. And she had heard, praise God, when she knew Jesus and heard Jesus, she knew what she had heard about him, and it was all good. This man was different. There was power in this man. As a matter of fact, she had heard that many people who had many diseases... The blind, he gave their sight back. Those who were lame, he let them walk. Those who were mute could speak. Even the dead had been raised. There was power, there was ability, and she was in need. And, and there's something unique because it's not just about her, it's her daughter. Now, if you want to get your attention, it's your daughter or your son, right? Right? It, it, things that you would not think much about. As a matter of fact, she probably, though everything that she had heard, listen to me now, though everything she had heard, she probably would not have gone to the house if it had not been for the need of her daughter. But the need of her daughter got her up, went there, to, and she went basically in and went to Jesus and said, I have a need. Look at this once again in, in verse number uh, 22. This woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. Now she's a Canaanite. They didn't get along with the Jews. They didn't like the Jews. They didn't want to follow the religion of the Jews. But she heard who he was, and when she came in, this sounds very good. Have mercy. Don't give me what I deserve. Lord, give me what I don't deserve. I know you Jews don't like us Canaanite people, but God, my Lord, Son of David, is there hope in you? Is there peace? Is there healing? That's what the world wants to know today. They've heard a lot about Jesus, but really, is there any different difference in the life of the people who say that they're Christians in the life that's, that's not? Do Christians react just the way those that are not Christians react? I mean, their circumstances seem to be the same. But do they have hope? Do they have love? Is there a difference in their life? And she came to that one and said, Lord, Master, Son of David, have mercy on me. And what does Jesus do? He gets out his iPhone. I mean, he's the I am, so he's got to have an iPhone, right? <laughs> Look at this. Preacher, you're being, being silly. No, I'm not. Look at verse 23. He answered her not a word. This is the offense of being ignored. You ever been ignored? Walk up to somebody and say, hey, start talking to them, and they just, well, bless your heart. 
right? You just, you just, how dare they? I was talking to him. He just walked away from me. That preacher's the rudest man I've ever seen in my life. How dare he do such a thing? I had something I wanted to say to him. He ignored me. You ever been ignored? Let, let's take a poll here. Which is worse, to be rejected or be ignored? I'd rather be rejected. You don't like me, just tell me. I'm good with that. Hey, I'm all right. That's good. Bless your heart. That's what I tell them. Bless your heart. But at least speak to me. I have a friend of mine, very smart friend, and, and, and he, he, is, he is crazy about this. He's, he has to be heard. That's what he'll tell you. He said, whether you do what I say or not, but, but I've got to be heard. No, you don't. Jesus didn't say a word. <clears throat> like the 16-year-old who came home to his dad and said, Dad, I'm 16. I'm fully grown. And, and my friends are having a party, and they invited me, and I really need to be at this party, and I, I'll probably be home 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and you don't have to wait up on me. The dad's reading the paper, and he kind of lowers it and goes, Get, how many of y'all's dad had that look? Amen? That, are you crazy? Look. Being ignored. Sometimes people feel like they have the right. Listen to me now. The right. You have to do what they want. You have to do. Don't ignore me. Don't ignore me. All right. Let, once again, let's just think about this for a moment. If you had gone and you had given him proper respect, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. I mean, you would have just expected him to say, oh, my goodness, let me get over here. Demon, get out. Do not enter again. It's so good that you came and brought your daughter. You're such a wonderful mom. May you be blessed, too. May you have no gray hairs from this moment forward, whatever. You know, that's what we... But Jesus just never said a word. Just never said a word. If that was you, how many of you would have had a huff? Y'all know what I'm talking about when I'm having a huff? <sighs> well, I can't believe that. You'd have walked home with an offense and somebody else had mentioned the name of Jesus and you'd have said, well, let me tell you what I think about Jesus. Was that this woman? No. No. What kept her there? There was something bigger, listen to me now, than her offense. Church, please hear me. I got to go forward. We need to have something bigger than the normal offenses of life. Luke 17 says they will come. What are we going to have that's bigger than our offenses? The Lord Jesus Christ. We need to have a different perspective. They ignore us. Well, maybe there's a reason that we don't see or know at that moment in time. So she stayed. She stayed. Now look what else happens here. Verse 23. He answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after, what's that word? Us. Us. Hold on. Who was she talking to? Christ. This tells me that this woman kept on. When Jesus was ignoring her, she just kept on. Probably when, when Jesus wasn't listening, she probably turned over to Peter and says, Peter, can you help me here? My daughter. John, what about you? Can you help me? Matthew, I saw you. I, I, you, you took my taxes. Is there anything you can do? And they come to Jesus and said, Lord, get this woman out of here because she's bothering us. This is why I liked this guy's outline. He calls this the offense of the institution. 
Does anybody ever get offended at church? Y'all ever heard of that? Well, we have people here, don't we? And it, it, is, it is impossible that offenses don't come where there's people. Y'all good with that? So people will get offended here. But it's bad when they get offended at God's house. Can I, can I amen that? We expect more here. But people do. Now, the Lord took Peter aside one time and said, Peter, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you. Don't think that Satan's changed his tactics. Somebody comes to God's house and somebody's trying to honor the Lord. Somebody's trying to serve the Lord. They're in small groups. They're singing in the choir. They're doing something else. Do you think that Satan wants to follow the, the, the theologian Barney Fife and nip it in the bud? Do you think he wants to stop it before that person starts growing closer to God? Do you think he wants to offend them to get them out? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Someone said something to me. Or someone didn't say something to me. Or I was down there helping out and they came to me and said, oh, we don't need your help. By the way, I've heard that one recently. There's all kinds of offenses. I call this bruised fruit. How many of y'all like peaches? Well, that was an amen moment. You just let it go right by. <laughs> and peaches, when they're, when they're tender and they're there and they're looking good, you can just pick that peach, but it's so easy to bruise. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Somebody that's growing in the grace of God, they're so easy to bruise. And they're offended. I talk to people all the time, and I talk to them about God, and they want to bring up church, and they're going to talk to me about how somebody treated them at church. God help us. God help us. I wish the disciples could have looked at this woman and said, Lord, don't send her away, but what can we do to help her? But listen to me. What they saw was she was changing what made them feel good and comfortable, and they saw the, the problem was her, get rid of her, and let's get back to status quo. God help us. And by the way, sometimes God's the one who brings the storms. Sometimes God is the one who throws the, 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 the hardship into it just to see what we're going to do. The offense of being ignored the offense of the institution. I wrote this down in my notes. Never project the nature of man upon the character of God. Y'all look up here. I will offend you. I'm not saying I'll mean to. But I'm going to mess up for sooner or later. Somehow I'm going to call Fred Harry or I, I will offend you. But don't take that out on Jesus. Never project the nature of man on the nature of God. I'm not there yet. And by the way, if you do it to me, I promise you I'll do my best to do the same. I'll do the same. Then it comes up and he, uh, the disciple said, send her away. And he looks over at her and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I wasn't sent here for you, woman. This is the offense of being insignificant. You ever been around somebody who made you feel small? You don't matter. Because that's really what God was saying. Woman, I'm not here for you. But he wasn't trying to be rude. 
What he was saying was, I was sent for a different reason. Let me illustrate this best I can. Um, Chuck's up here, and Chuck, after church, Rick trips him. That was an offense. But Chuck forgives him, and he says, Preacher, I, I think I've really hurt my ankle. I've sprained my ankle. We got more nurses in this church than we know what to do with. So four or five, of Melba's right there. She reaches down there and grabs it and says, Chuck, it's, it's not broke, but we probably need to take you to the hospital to get, you, get some x-rays. Chuck says, that's a good idea. So we take him to the hospital, and he goes up there to the ER. Have anybody been to the ER at Northeast Georgia Hospital? Can, can we say these two words, God help? It's always full. They must give away $100 if you come into the emergency room because it's always full before they take away $500. That's right. <laughs> Amen. So Chuck goes back there, and the doctor's looking at him, and he says, you know, uh, yeah, you, you sprained it. It's, it's a good sprain, but it's not broke. Then all of a sudden they say, gunshot, gunshot. And somebody else comes through on a gurney. Somebody's bleeding out all over the place, and next thing you know, there's four doctors in there. All the, all the nurses have been, you know, they've been siphoned out, and they're over there working on him, and Chuck's going, hey! <laughs> what about the ankle? <laughs> Come on now. I was here first. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Aren't you grateful for priorities? No offense. Amen. There may be something else at that moment in time. Come on now. At that moment in time. Let's just pause here for a moment. I'm a child of the king. I'm saved. My Lord has written my name down in the Lamb's book of life. I'm good. I'm working on some stuff. I want to serve the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want to finish well. But if the Lord takes me today, I'm going to heaven. Amen? Amen. What about the one that doesn't know Christ? You going to come give me your attention, or are you going to give them your attention? Hear the pastor and hear the pastor well. Y'all have been extremely kind to me. You have been very loving to me. You have gone out of your way to bless me. And I say thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God will bless you for that. But I'm here to tell you. Let me go ahead and, and, and let you in on it. I'm good. If you want to go bless on somebody that doesn't know Christ yet, you won't offend me at all. As a matter of fact, I'm insignificant to that. That's of higher priority. Someone will come to you in your life and say, make you feel like you're insignificant. You're a child of the king. There is not one thing that you can do to make God love you more. You are fully loved. You are embraced. All that he has is yours. You're not insignificant at all. They may have issues. They may have problems. They may have difficulties. They may need somebody to love on them. Just because you have been offended does not mean you have to make it personal. You can take it and let it go. The offense of being ignored. The offense of the institution. God help us. The offense of being seen as insignificant. But this is what gets me here. She says, um, he said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came, New King James says, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. The word worship means to bow down. So she's probably been standing up and when she was talking to the other disciples and then she heard Jesus and heard what he said. Instead of being offended by it, she went and got down on her knees before him, probably at his feet, and said, Lord, 
help me. Then Jesus said, bless you. No, he didn't. Verse 26, he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little, yeah, he did, dogs. I can't take what belongs to somebody else and throw it to you. This is the offense of being insulted. Anybody ever been insulted? You wouldn't think that he'd come from Jesus. Call me a dog? You gonna call me a dog? How dare you? Who do you think you are? How many of you would have stormed out by now? Come on. Call me a dog? Actually, I'm a Georgia Bulldog, so you can call me a dog all you want to. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Amen. We'll look overlook, we'll overlook the rest. I got attacked by a yellow jacket yesterday. My leg's swollen, so I don't like them at all. <laughs> they had two different terms for dogs. And by the way, the street dogs, the ones worse than a junkyard dog, the old mangy creature. That's the term that they usually called the Gentiles, the Canaanites. They called them dogs. They called them bad. I mean, just you old mangy thing, you good for nothing. Street varmint. But that's not the word that he used. He used the word for the pet, the pet dog. I got a friend, they lost their dog of 18 years. And they got, a, got his wife a new dog. Brought us, it's about that big. It looks like a hamster. <laughs> and it, it's not one of those, you know, sometimes those little ones would take on a bear. Y'all know what I'm talking about? But this one's polite and kind. It wants to lick you. But it just wants to get up in, your, up in your lap and all that kind of stuff. Now, guess where that dog sleeps? Hey, you're right. <laughs> Sleeps right at his feet. Guess what that dog eats? Whatever the master eats. Y'all hear me? It's got its own bed, but he just chooses to sleep wherever he wants to. This woman, instead of being insulted, she got thinking about it, and she said, hold on. He didn't call me old varmint. He called me pet dog that means cared for and loved he's my master he provides so back to that he says in verse 27 yes lord yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table you know what he's saying he, he made any excuse and every excuse for this woman not to get it. But can y'all hear me? She was not going to give up. She was not going to be offended. She was going to be persistent. She had a need that she knew God could meet. And there was something in her that made her believe. And to that, when he said, yes, uh, we just get whatever's left over. The leftovers are good enough. The Lord looked and said, woman, great is your faith. You saw beyond. You saw, you saw something that, that the offenses wasn't giving you. The offense wanted you to go a different way, but, but you saw beyond that. You saw love. You saw, you saw value there. And you didn't give up. And I think the Lord wants to know, if we, are we going to give up? The Lord wants to know, do we care? The Lord wants to know, are we going to be persistent? Or are we going to walk away? Here's the problem. Offenses will come. And they will meet you in your emotions. 
That's how all of us as human beings are. We take those things, our, our brain is set up this way. And, and emotions are how you deal with the short term. But if we've been offended there, it will move from being an emotion, it will move to a memory or, or a state. And, and every time you think of that person, you'll think of what they said or how they made you feel when they ignored you or they said that rude thing to you. And every time you're around that person, you will not want to be around that person. You will not want to love on them with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You will not love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Offenses will divide, but God will unite. Offenses will tear down, but God will build up. This woman, I've often said I have the skin of a rhinoceros. You know how it got that way? I've been a pastor for a lot of years. It didn't start that way. But you know what? There's some things that used to offend me. I'm not going to let them offend me no more. I'm just not. I'm going I'm to choose to see value. I'm going to choose not to get down on the lowest level, but to be raised up to a new level, a high level. I would rather cherish than to destroy. How many people do you know that are negative? I promise you, they've been offended. And it's moved. And it's become part of their being. It's become part of how they're designed. Because they never got over it. If we're going to have vision of God, we're going to have to start looking at things the way he looks at it. That means we're going to have to humble ourselves. Listen to me, church. And we're going to have to forgive. The way we've been forgiven, we must forgive others. We're going to have to love the way he loved us. We're going to have to love them. The way he was patient with us, we're going to have to be patient with them. We're going to have to have some new hindsight. Let's pray. Father God, we need you. Father, you told us that it is impossible that offenses don't come. They're going to come, and they're going to hurt. And, Lord, many people are going to be the victims of that. But, Lord, I pray that we uh, choose you. We choose not to be offended. We choose to love. We choose not to let Satan attack relationships because we know that's what he loves to do. Somebody doesn't get their way. Somebody doesn't get heard. And, and, and they just refuse to talk to people. And relationships are broken. God help us. Lord, humble us. And Father, I know I'm good, but Lord, I need to love the ones that aren't there yet. There's nothing between my heart and you, but Lord, if they don't know you as Savior and Lord, they're a heartbeat from a, a, an eternity without you, and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Lord, let us be about your business. Lord, let the church be alive. Let the church be the church. Let the Christians have a new viewpoint. May we not act like the world anymore. Lord, we've got to be serious. We've got to be real. So, Lord, let healing begin today. It's not a matter of if we've been offended, Lord, but let there be healing in those places today so that we can get up and walk anew, afresh. Christ, you can. You have in me. I pray that you continue to in me. Lord, do. I know Satan's going to try to get people to, to put it off, not do it now. But I pray, Lord, we start loving people, forgiving people now. As, as many people as you put across our mind, may we start giving them to you and forgiving them now. Lord, build with your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.